kept on climbing. We are going uphill backwards, slowly inching our way backwards uphill. I think the Spirit Rover will probably be driving backwards a lot from here on out. Churning up the surface had an unexpected bonus. Someone looked at one image and said, hey, see that soil looks a little bright. Maybe we are here today. We could check it and see what's happening up there. And we did it. We just took the time to look at something that looked different. And well, we know what happened next. It is the more salt we ever found on, on Mars. The rocks seem to have been modified in a salty water environment. Those rocks are much older than the basalts. So we finally have found the kind of smoking gun evidence for water at or close to the surface on Gusev. Spirit continued upwards. The scientists wanted more rocks, more evidence of water. The engineers wanted to get higher to capture more sunlight. As expected, the solar panels were getting covered with dust. Once again, Spirit got lucky. Her cameras captured images of dust devils. One must have come close enough to sweep the solar panel back to as much as in the first days after landing. Still, she climbed up to and past a rock named Larry's Lookout. When she turned around, the Gusev crater story came into focus. Looking back from an ancient rock named Methuselah, the scientist recognized a set of tilted layers stretching clear across the nearby valley. Spirit's long road trip had been successful. What we are starting to put together with the, the history of Gusev now is that it seems that the volcanic history and the water history are intermixed together. And what best combination can you find if you're talking about habitability, about having at the same time or following each other very closely, volcanism and water. This is exactly what you want. This is the right recipe. And both the, the salty water at Gusev and the salty water at Murdiani increase the chance of um, the development and evolution of life. That has increased the habitability potential dramatically. Are we alone in the universe? Is there life beyond Earth? Now we have a way to begin answering such questions. Modern science replaces speculation, hunches, belief with hypotheses, experiment, and evidence. By mid-2005, both rovers had outlived their nominal lifetimes more than six times over. But perhaps their achievements were best expressed by Steve Squires on the day when Spirit and Opportunity passed their warranty date of 90 sols on Mars. You know, we did it. I mean, we did 600 meters, we did all the panoramas we were supposed to do, two rovers, 90 sols, eight locations, all of those mission success criteria, and yet, nowhere did it say <laughs> that the MER project shall make scientific discoveries of historic importance. <laughs> Nowhere did it say that the MER project shall forge a partnership between scientists and engineers where the scientists are always thinking engineering and the engineers are always thinking science and we're all pulling in the same direction at once. <laughs> Nowhere did it say that the MER project shall give the nation and the agencies some good news in space at a time when we really needed it. And nowhere did it say that the MER project shall captivate the attention of the world. But we did all those things. Yeah. I, think we should be I think we really have made a fundamental step forward of no longer speculating about places where environments for life might have existed, but there really is one. And it's not one of those oh my god, we just landed, I'm elated, throw my hands in the air type of moments. It's just that deep satisfaction of inching forward and finally having a... We've, we've contributed.